Okay, uh, welcome to this uh, session where I'm going to do some revision of uh, combined science physics, the energy topic, and I'm going to do that by going through a worked exam question. Um, and let me just turn the uh, pen on so I can draw on the screen. Lovely jubbly. Right, so in this question, uh, where it's the question is asking about a kettle that is being heated up. It describes an experiment, which we'll come back to. And then it says the heating element of the kettle was connected to the mains supply. So that's uh, a question about electricity. And then it says, explain why the temperature of the heating element increased. So explain is a command word which uh, means that you've got to give a scientific reason for something. So we expect to see because in the answer. So uh, the key points here are that there is a current flowing, which is moving electrons. And those moving electrons uh, collide with the particles in the element of the kettle. You can see the heating element is labelled there. So they collide with atoms in the element and this makes the uh, increases the kinetic energy of those particles okay so you may remember that uh, when we studied uh, energy uh, there's a concept called internal energy and the internal energy of uh, any material is the sum of the kinetic energy of the particles plus the potential energy of the particles and we learnt that when the potential energy changes that's associated with a change of state we haven't got a change of state here we're heating up water so we're talking about the kinetic energy of the particles so the electrons are forcing their way through the element and as they push their way through, they collide with atoms in the heating element and increase their uh, kinetic energy, which means that they vibrate more, essentially. OK, so uh, let's go on to the next uh, question. It says, give one variable that the student should have controlled. So in this experiment, in, whenever they describe an experiment, OK, you, you obviously haven't done this experiment. They don't expect you to have. Um, you need to think about variables. You need to look at the information and think, OK, what was the independent variable uh, in this experiment? Uh, if I can spell it, independent. Uh, that's the, the, the thing that uh, we change. So how the mass of water in a kettle affected the time taken for the water to boil. So the, the mass of water is the... Uh, the independent variable in this experiment and then the dependent variable is the one that depends on that in other words the one that we measure so in this case it was the time taken for the water to reach boiling point and then in any experiment to make sure that the results are, uh, are, are reliable we need to have control variables those are all the things that we keep the same so in this case, we think, well, what might affect the time for the water to boil apart from the mass of water? Um, so we, <clears throat> thinking about this, uh, you might be tempted to say something about using the same kettle every time. Well, that might be true, but that's quite a weak answer. The, uh, the best answer to give in this case uh, is the starting temperature of the water. Obviously, if we're finding the time taken for the water to reach boiling point, uh, and it starts off warm, then it's going to take less time to heat up than if it starts off with cold water. So in this case, the control variable, the thing the student should have kept the same, is the starting temperature of the water. I can't spell. Starting temp of water. OK, right, let's move on. So now we've got a graph. And uh, we're looking at the students' results here, and it says figure five shows how the mass of the water in the kettle affected the time taken for the kettle to switch off. So you can see across the horizontal axis, we've got the mass of water, and on the vertical axis, the time taken for the kettle to switch off. So if they give you a graph like this, they're going to obviously ask you some questions about it. So the, this, in this case, uh, they're not asking for numerical values of this one, which is relatively unusual. But it says, suggest why the line on figure 5 does not go through the origin. So obviously the origin is 0, 0. It doesn't go through the origin. It, um, when the time 
sorry, apologies, when the mass of water is zero, it takes a certain time for the kettle to switch off. So when there's no water in the kettle and you switch it on, not a good idea, it takes a few seconds, according to this scale, it takes something like 10 seconds to switch off. Um, so why is that? Well, that's because uh, the element needs time to heat up. So when you see this word suggest, this command word is expecting you to come up with any reasonable idea. It's not expecting you to have pre-learned that. It's not expecting us to have discussed in class about um, kettles heating up and experiments like this. With suggest, you're expected to look at the information, use your judgment to decide a reason for that. And the reason for that is the element takes a little while to heat up. OK, that's, what's the next question? So the next question is, suggest why the patterns give a non-linear pattern. So uh, you can see that this is a curve. It's not quite straight and it doesn't go through the origin. So one of the, um, one of the phrases that we need to know is, is when something is directly proportional. And that's a phrase that comes up quite a lot. OK, this is not directly proportional, but that phrase directly proportional means when the line is straight and through the origin. So why, another suggest question, why the results give a non-linear pattern? Well, the reason for this is to do with, uh, you can look at the shape of the graph. As the mass of the water increases, the uh, it, it's curving off so that, imagine if this was a straight line, if it was a linear relationship, it would go something like this. So you'd expect, as we, if we had double the amount of water, it might take nearly double the amount of time, okay, but it's taking less time than we would expect if it was a straight line. Why is that? Well, it's to do with the fact that if we've got more water, then uh, more of a, a higher mass of water, it means less energy is transferred to the surroundings, which means that the kettle is more efficient. So what you might say in this answer here is that the, the rate of energy transferred to the surroundings that rate decreases as the mass of water increases okay or you could just say that the uh, efficiency of the kettle increases as the mass of water increases okay so those, those are relatively tricky little questions there but uh, whenever you see the word suggest then we know that that's a slightly more uh, challenging part of the of the question OK, so uh, so far we've only had uh, four marks on this. So uh, let's look at the, the big part of this question, which is it, this is a six mark question. Now, six marks on a physics paper, sometimes it, it's a calculation. So this is quite a challenging calculation because it's asking us to calculate the specific heat capacity of water. And uh, we know because it's six mark a uh, question, that means there's going to be more than one step to the calculation. Now, some equations you need to learn off by heart, and some of them uh, are provided in the exam. So uh, the equation for specific heat capacity was on the, the um, equation sheet that you get given in the exam. And the equation that you need is the energy transferred is equal to mass times the specific heat capacity times the temperature change, which is often given as, as theta. So in this in this question, uh, we've got the mass and we've got the temperature change, so that's good. Um, but the energy, that's not clear. We've got to calculate the amount of energy. So in this uh, calculation, we're going to assume that all of the electrical energy supplied by the kettle was transferred into thermal energy in the water. OK, so uh, to work out that energy, we need another equation. Now, this one's not on the equation sheet. It's one of the ones that you have to memorize. And that is the equation using power. 
because look, it tells you the power of the kettle. Power is equal to energy supplied divided by time. So a powerful device transfers a lot of energy in a short time. So you notice the question gives us the, the power of the kettle and it gives us the time that uh, the kettle was running for. So to work out energy, we need to rearrange that equation. So rearranging that equation, energy is equal to power times time. Now then, here's a little trap for the unwary. Whenever you're calculating um, in this, with using this formula, you've got to check your units are right. We want time to be in seconds. In any physics calculation, try to get time into seconds. Power is got the units of watts. So uh, we look up here. Mm, look, this says kilowatts. Right, we've got to watch out for that because that means not 2.6, uh, not just 2.6, but 2.6 thousand watts. So the power is 2,600. That's 2.6 kilowatts, but I've just converted that back into watts because that's the, the units that we want. And then the time, it's given us the time in seconds already. We might have said two minutes. If it was a really nasty question, it might have said two minutes and you'd have had to have converted the seconds, uh, the, sorry, the minutes into seconds. So now we know that the energy then is 312,000 joules. Units of energy is always joules. Um, okay, that's all, all, all good. Uh, you notice, of course, that would have been fairly tricky if you didn't have your calculator handy. Make sure you have got your calculator handy. Um, so uh, our final stage now is to use this equation to work out the specific heat capacity. So rearranging that equation, C, the specific heat capacity, is equal to the energy transferred divided by mass times the temperature change. Okay. So we know that the temperature change here is 82 degrees centigrade from 18 to 100. So we can now substitute all our values in. So E, that's the energy we just worked out. So 312,000 joules divided by the mass, which it tells us at the top there, 0 0.8 kilos multiplied by the, oh, didn't put the units in, let's put that in, Div, uh, multiplied by the temperature change, which was 82 degrees centigrade. And that gives us an answer, if we work it all out, to 4756. In fact, just to say, if you're using your calculator, do that bit first, put brackets around that. Okay, so now we've got an answer. Uh, but there's one final little step we have to notice is it says give your answer to two significant figures. So uh, you get an extra mark in this question for converting that into uh, two significant figures. So we want that one for the next significant figure. That's seven, but the one after it is a five. So we round that one up and then we put in just zeros for the others. So the answer is 4,800. Now, what are the units? The units are joules per kilogram degree C. Now there isn't a mark for the units, you could get away without that in fact, um, but there is your answer at the end. So there was quite a lot involved. For six marks there's quite a lot of steps. Uh, whenever you see, as I said, a six mark calculation question you know that there is going to be two steps to the calculation, or two formulas involved probably. All right, so uh, good luck with that, and uh, maybe this is a good time to have a go at a specific heat capacity calculation question for yourself. See ya, bye.